Wow. Uh, CBR wrote an article complaining about comic book fandom. Now, this is comic book resources. This is a literal website about comic book fandom. These people are usually aspiring comic book fans writing articles for CBR for clout. They're trying to get clout within the comic book industry. Uh, it's called the Access Media. At least that's what Eric July refers to it as. All these people kind of just uh, suck off Marvel and DC and say how wonderful they are all the time. And then Marvel and DC gives them access. They give them review copies in advance. They give them access for interviews and things like that. They never ask any tough questions. They never, uh, of course, uh, criticize anything that needs to be criticized. And they never actually take the side of the fans. They actually take the side against the fans in favor of these studios. That's why they call it the Access Media. Because if the Access Media wasn't there and if these people uh, were uh, you know, held accountable for what their actions were, they'd take that access away from companies like CBR. So of course, the first thing they do is attack fandom. And here is uh, the 10 worst things about comic fandom uh, from CBR. This was published over 4th of July weekend when nobody would see it. Manga are comics. Uh, manga is a completely different genre than comics and something completely different. This guy's way off base already uh, because, of course, a lot of people on the Internet talk about how manga is doing so much better than comics. And they refer to U.S. comics when they're talking about that. It is a very, very different market. They're all in black and white. They are put out mostly in like magazine format and then compiled later. That's a very different thing than the comic industry. And it's ridiculous. Comics Twitter. So, of course, they don't like the discussion about comics on Twitter because Everything recently from Marvel and DC Comics has been a complete disaster. Uh, from the last several years, it's been filled with woke propaganda, and it's just annoyed classic fans who want to see their superheroes and good stories. That's all they care about. You can see uh, the difference in the way that uh, fans talk about Isom Number 1 by Eric July, or Cyberfrog by Ethan Van Skyver, or Flying Sparks by myself. People truly love these comics, and they're here just for the love of it. They're not here for uh, the properties and then going, oh gosh, I wish they wouldn't be doing that for it. But unfortunately, DC and Marvel have made a cottage industry about pissing off their fans, and they actually do it intentionally now. It's a marketing ploy in order to get people to talk about their books more, is do something to piss off their fans. And that's exactly all they've been doing, it's spiraling over the last several years. It's been a complete disaster. The people who complain don't buy. So, of course, here it is. Uh, the people who are complaining don't actually buy the comics. But why would I buy, like, a gay Iceman X-Men story? Like, I'm not interested in that. I know it's going to be terrible before I even see it. If I look at a couple pages of it from the previews, I know that the dialogue's bad, the art's bad, uh, everything about the writing's bad. Why should I need to then buy the book? It doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Uh, so these, this is a ridiculous comment by these people here. But they talk about more uh, in here, and you see the name comics gate i'm surprised they're actually even allowed to talk about and say the name in the article when these people talk on twitter about comics gate they put asterisks in for like where the i is or the a so that they don't spell it out so that people can't search it and see on twitter when they're talking badly about comics gate because they are afraid of comics gate people now comics gate is a movement that started in uh late 2017 and it started because there was a fellow diversity in comics your boy zach now who was making YouTube reviews about these woke comics, and he was saying they're crap. Now, what happened was a group conspired in a Facebook group of comic book professionals to try to get him kicked out of New York Comic Con. They were trying to ban him under false pretenses. And, of course, uh, a movement for formed around this to protect the guy who was actually just reviewing the books honestly on behalf of the people, uh, and that's what pissed off the industry people. So Comicsgate is not a weaponize these tendencies. Fans... And former fans of mainstream creators complained about the fact that comics industry had become slightly more diverse. No, it's about the woke comics, and they're a disaster. It's not slightly more diverse. Terrible thing. So they misrepresent things, and here, here we are right here. You can tell where this guy has his biases right away. And, of course, right after he talks about Comics Gate, anti-LGBTQIA bigotry. Look at all the letters they keep throwing on this. It's even more. I'm surprised they haven't put the P in there yet, which is what we're really complaining about. Because at the end of the day, these comic books are superheroes. Superheroes are designed uh, for children. And, of course, when you put this kind of thing in there, it is called grooming. And so that is the problem that everybody has with this stuff. And, of course, turning beloved characters gay really is just obnoxious. Uh, and it's virtue signaling and it's bad storytelling. So that's exactly what we are complaining about people also support their books they aren't happy about now this is actually a good one uh people do buy these books all the time uh, over and over and over again i know uh my good friend yellow flash buys spider-man monthly just because he wants a complete collection of spider-man stop it yellow flash stop supporting this uh, demonic industry please 
Uh, but they do. Uh, they buy the books even though they hate them every month just because it has the name of the character on it. It's really obnoxious. And here we go. After the comic skate and, of course, anti-LGBTQ bigotry false claims, harassing creators. Now, again, they show a picture of Heather Antos. Now, Heather Antos has caused a ton of drama on the Internet, and she's failed her way upward uh, by just uh, torching properties behind her. Fans have really not liked anything she's done on any property that she's done. And yet, if you criticize her online, it's harassment. Now, this is a public industry, and, of course, criticism from fans about books and things like that should be welcome, especially if there's problems. You should be willing to better yourself and trying to better yourself. But they don't want to. They want this to all be about political agenda. They want it all to be about their identities, and that's the problem that they have here. So since people say things online that are opposed to what these people want, uh, that's harassment rather than criticism, and it is actually criticism for the most part. Not giving indie comics a chance? I don't know, man. Uh, so, the, of course, the tired comic industry uh, complains about this stuff. But over here with the Iron Age, with Comicsgate, with Eric July, with Razor Fist, with my books, Ethan's books, and more, Shadowversity's books, uh, you've seen that indies do get a chance uh, when they're good. And so th we are making product that people actually are interested in because we're telling stories that people are actually interested in, and we succeed because of that. There's no complaints from here. Stan Lee worship. Stan Lee did a great job. Why, why the whole industry is based around his works? That's what Marvel Comics is. Why wouldn't that be existing in the industry? You guys are crazy. Now the crazy part is how Marvel and his estate handled his life and actually uh, really abused the guy towards the end of his life. But that's another video for another time. The Marvel versus DC. He's complaining about again. Why? What the two big giants? Why wouldn't you talk about that? And number one. The comic book resources, this is ridiculous and ironic coming from comic book resources, gatekeeping. Well, yes, uh, comic book resources and, of course, the access media tries to gatekeep people who do have valid criticism about comics, who are complaining about the problems with woke entertainment being interjected to us, being interjected to our kids. They are trying to gatekeep people like myself. You would never see comic book resources these days cover one of my books. Before I uh, was uh, forced into becoming a political figure on the Internet, by the way, they did write an article about my Flying Sparks saying it was the kind of stuff that made them fall in love with early Marvel comics. So I did. I am writing those classic books. They don't want you to know about it, though. They will gatekeep this. It is something that they do. This is what the access media does all the time while complaining about nobody buying indies. Well, I'm not complaining. I just make my work, I get it done, and I love my audience. And that's the difference between me and these guys. I respect you as a viewer. I respect you as a reader. And so do all the friends around me. Those are the people I surround myself with because we are building something way better than this, quote, comic fandom that this guy wants to gatekeep at the end of the day. That's the truth about comic book resources. All right, ridiculous and a big attack on Comicsgate and a big attack on the fans like usual. This is what they do, and this is why they're failing. Leave a comment down below with what you think about this. Hit that like and subscribe button. We'll be back soon.